one of these people who comes to parenting lectures. I don't know if you're dragged here or if you come to every single one. But if you're one of those people that's like enthusiastically buys books, of which I'm very grateful, right? But like you have lots of books and your kids are like onto the fact that you read lots of these books. Anything, anything that anybody gives you, like I give you, somebody else gives you, if you think that this is relevant to your child, I would suggest to you that you do not go home and say that to your child because your child has their own life. And I could be wrong. If you read something in here or whatever what I've read or have written or somebody else, just say to the kids, to your sons or your daughters, you know, I saw this person, I heard her speak, I heard another person, doesn't matter, me or anybody else. I don't know if they're right. So could you read this two paragraphs or this two pages and tell me what you think about it? Because then you're actually engaging your child in a conversation about their life, and you're not assuming that what I'm saying is right. And that is respectful to your children. The Latin definition of respect is to look back at someone's achievements and admire them or give them credit. Dignity, dignitas in Latin means to be worthy. So dignity, by the way, is the given. Regardless of how old you are or you are always, always have dignity. But I actually believe that respect is earned. And this can be really countercultural to some people. I think that adults don't necessarily merit respect. I think they always merit dignity, like everybody does. But one of the realities is, is that young people are seeing adults who don't merit their respect. If we want young people to buy into listening to us about anything, we have to acknowledge the messiness of the adults in their lives. When we do that, I think young people very much come to us and engage with us and want to have a conversation and will tell us what's going on in their lives. Now, here's a really big deal between drama and bullying. This is a very big deal for me. Everything is not bullying. There is so much stuff on bullying, and it's gotten to the point where if a kid gets excluded from a party, that is bullying. That is not bullying. Now, that could be very painful and difficult for your kid, and it's a terrible situation, and that's painful. It is not bullying. Here's the definitions. Bullying is repeatedly abusing or threatening to abuse their power against another person. It is about stripping somebody of their dignity, and it is usually about saying, you don't have the right to be because you are this way. You are inherently this way. That is why it is so connected to homophobia, sexism, racism, where you come from, your socioeconomic status. status. It's saying what you are is not acceptable. That is different than, than drama. Drama is a conflict between two people that's exciting. This is how kids define it. It is not taken seriously, and other people can gossip about it. <laughs> now, drama can be hurtful, and it can be distracting, absolutely. But here's the issue with bullying, too, is that kids think that adults are, and parents are labeling everything bullying. And we have to be clear about the words that we use, because words have power. So the way usually people like me come and talk about bullying is this way. There's one person who's absolutely horribly evil. There's one person who's 100% innocent, never goes both ways. And the other part is, if adults get involved, it gets worse because they blow it out of proportion. And the other thing that kids often get from someone like me to them is that there is no appreciation or acknowledgment that adults are part of the problem. They, of course, we can be part of the solution. But we never, in bullying situations where we talk about abuse of power, do we acknowledge when adults abuse power against other adults or against children, and that children see that. So kids in assemblies will sit there and say, like, yeah, right, but that principal over here, this vice principal over here, this counselor, this teacher, whatever, totally belittles me. And nothing happens. So we sometimes lack credibility when we're talking about these issues. And these issues go to the absolute heart of the culture of a school. So this is what a typical thing that a teacher will say. Every conflict my students get into is not bullying. I'd like a solid definition, definition of bullying, so we're not crying bully when we should be helping kids work through average teen drama. Now, it's really easy, though, to be patronizing towards kids' stuff, right? This is average teen drama. But that average teen drama can be really hurtful. And when your kid comes home and tells you about something, like not being invited to a party, you can obviously, and you have my blessing for whatever this is worth, to hate the child who did not invite your child to the party, and hate the parents who did not invite your child to the party. But you can't have that manage your behavior, right? Because then if you manage your behavior, then you're a crazy, anxious parent. And that is something to be avoided if at all costs. Sometimes you can't, can't be helped. None of us wake up in the morning and be like, oh yeah, today I want to be a crazy, anxious, micromanaging parent. Nobody does that. But we all have moments where we feel like this. The benefit of being an adult is supposed to be that you manage your behavior and you're self-aware of it. And 
You don't get to a place where the self-righteous, understandable, self-righteous feeling of I'm a parent, you have messed with my kid, now I have to destroy you, rationalizes, <laughs> rationalizes all of the feelings that you have to go to the school, right? So like when a parent says, I'm gonna go to that school, I'm gonna go to the school, I'm gonna take care of it, right? <laughs> Taking care of it does not mean this child has to be expelled from the school right now and if you don't do something about it, I will. Taking care of it should mean how does your child learn how to be socially competent? How do they learn how to get through a really hard time? Maybe they're not gonna get everything perfect, but that they can get through this school and they can go to school and engage, and that they have the confidence that their parent has the confidence in them that they can get through hard times. That's taking care of it. It is not making ultimatums and threats. I do realize, and I certainly appreciate as a mom, that my kids will say I'm freaking out if I raise my eyebrow, right? <laughs> If I sigh, it's like I have completely lost my mind, right? <laughs> I do sigh, and I do raise my eyebrow. They're sort of right about that. It's just quiet, right? It's quiet. I'm not freaking out. But freaking out when you are advocating for your kid, and you go to the teacher, and you start being very assertive. I'm not talking yelling, but like super assertive. Like, it's scary. We can be in a place of like, this is, I'm coming from a good place. I'm advocating for my child. I'm in the right. The problem that I have heard from kids over and over again is if they have parents who do that, they're rarely going to tell their parents anything because if they're going to freak out about that, God knows what's going to happen if your child tells you about something else, right, that they're having a problem. So ironically, and this is one of the confusing, crazy things about being a parent, we're doing something from a good place. We're advocating for our kids, and we want our children to talk to us. But if we advocate like a crazy person, our children will not talk to us. It's really important because we want our children to know that when they come to talk to their parents, that their parents are a source of comfort, but also a source of thinking things through. Not necessarily to fix the problem, but to think things through. And one of the things about boy world that's complicated is that there's never a line that's not funny. And if you, as a boy, say that something's not funny, then you're uptight, you're gay, or you're being like a girl. There are things that happen that are not funny, right? And so how do you get to a place where boys are able to say to each other, what just happened is not funny? The racist thing that you just said is not funny. Now, I don't know your children. I just don't want you to make the assumption that because we say racism is bad, they therefore internalize that and then know how to talk about it. We have to have constant conversations about what this looks like so that they can speak out. If we want a chance of them being able to speak truth to power in difficult moments now and as they get older, then we've got to have these really tough conversations. And it starts with understanding the complexities of boys' lives. Those of you who have middle school girls, when people say to you, so how old are your kids? And you say, I have a 13-year-old girl, I have a 12-year-old girl, 11-year-old girl. It's very common for your people to go, oh my god, oh, those mean girls, oh, that's so terrible. And then what we say about boys is, girls are so hard and boys are easy. Now, when we say girls are hard, I think that's really horrible to girls because it says to them that the legacy they deserve to have strong relationships with girls that they can depend on, that's not what they should expect. What they should expect is girls to be horrible, terrible people to each other. What we need to be saying is girls have conflicts with each other. It can be really, really hard. But what you deserve and what you can get if you work hard on it are friendships that you really value and that you can count on. On the other side, saying to boys, you're so easy, first of all, they're not that easy. They have complex situations in their lives and they don't feel they can talk about it because boys are simple. If we want boys to be emotionally complex people who will like, have healthy relationships with people, they do have the right to have complex feelings about it. But we say boys are easy and boys are simple. So it says to them, if you have any problems with that, if you, have any, if you feel differently, there is something inherently wrong with you. Mm -hmm.